Um, if there's yeah. any argument, you won't get to play. We, the officials, you, you... <laughs> leave it to us. Which captain's Lakin? In the ancient Yorkshire game of Nur and Spell, laking means playing. But long before laking time, the shouting match that traditionally comes first gets underway. A row over the draw is just the start. We don't want no argument. Let me draw on it. <laughs> this is Nur and Spell's biggest day of the year at Greetland on the moors above Halifax. It's the World Championships. 59-year-old local builder Selwyn Schofield is the defending title holder. What number are you drawn? I don't know. Unless, number one is it? No. Number one is mine. Oh. Ask number, six. number six. Number six. six. Yeah. Is that good? That's a good one now, yeah. Eight is Same day as I was born, June 6th. It's just the same. So. D-Day. D-Day. Yeah. Yeah. With £200 and a silver cup hanging on the result, it's D-Day indeed for 12 of Nur and Spell's finest Lakers. They come from the last three rival strongholds of this 500-year-old game. Here at Greetland, further south in Barnsley, and Combe just across the Lancashire border. What's the secret of these? That secret. This little bit here. The face. That secret. The face. Yeah. The subtleties of Nur and Spell are little known outside a tight circle of dedicated men. There are long sticks with mallet heads and a rock-hard china clay ball called a potty. There aren't any Nurs these days. They were like the potties, only made of wood. Even the spring action spell, apparently, is being replaced by new contraptions. But a few spells survive to give the name of the game at least half its old meaning. Well, take them up yonder with them. Well, I don't want them to go out the back. No, <laughs> let them on the wall up at the gate. I don't want them down here. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's still plenty of scores to settle before the action. The Barnsley contingent think they've uncovered a plot to slip in a local player who hadn't qualified. Listen, I'm supposed to be on this World Championship <coughs> Committee. Oh, you are. Me, yes, yeah. I represent these South Yorkshire lads. Yeah. And I'm going yeah. to tell you this, this is a nothing but a big farce because I know nothing until I got the time of the time this was going to be played and the date, and not a thing do I know. And these lads from Barnley, as he said, have been played six months, they've had to qualify, and as far as I'm concerned, never mind anybody coming invited to be to play, it's not it, and it's time it was all altered. It was not. It was. It was not. You weren't there. Yes, because I wasn't... Why, I'm you on the committee, I wasn't there. invited to come. You weren't there. Tell me why I wasn't invited well, I to come. Know. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I'm not on Well, don't, don't say it was passed by a committee it when was. it was not. It was. It was not. It was. I'm a member of that committee and it no, was not passed. No. And I'm telling you. Well, I'm telling you it was. Well, I'm telling you. Once again, world champion yeah. Selwyn Schofield yeah. stays yeah. cannily out of the feuding. Yeah. And the unqualified yeah. intruder is removed from the starting yeah. list. The time-honoured ritual of objections goes on. There are mutterings that there was a fix in the qualifying round. A stiff breeze means the location has to be changed to the bottom of a hill, and Barnsley don't like that either. But, at last, the moment when the arguing has to stop. Uh, no, I'm not moving no more, Ron. I've moved once from down there. I'm not moving no more. I'm stopping here, Ron. You can't tell me to change your time. The last stand of former world champion Stuart Greenfield from Cone gets things moving. Flowers. Which is flowers? Where's Nietzsche? Where's Flowers anywhere? Like we want him. Where is he? Go on, Mitch. Oh, you Flowers, right. Well, get yourself lined up, lad. Number three, you are. With the war of words over for the time being, it finally becomes a bit clearer what all the shouting's been about. The present world's champion from Greetland. The object, quite simply, is to hit the potty as hard and far as you can. The world record of 304 yards has stood unbroken since 1899. This side! It's no surprise that there's disagreement over techniques as well. In the modern game, the potty is held in a sling instead of being catapulted from the traditional spell. In fact, Barnsley are now the last remaining exponents of the spell. A trickier game, but worth a few vital extra yards on a really good strike. Wait a minute, and that'll blow you off in A couple of hundred yards away, across two walls, stand the lookers-out. Quiet! 
Quiet, everybody, please. <laughs> good it, lad. That's it, number two. A distant blast on the whistle is their signal to watch keenly where the potty lands and mark the spot with a peg. Further ugly rumours from time to time mark this fine sporting occasion, namely that certain lookers-out surreptitiously tread the potties of a rival team into the ground. Looker-out-in-chief Dan Binns explains. And, uh, you know, well, that's 18, you see, and I can't find it. Well, they're five minutes looking for it. Well, you see, you've tried it in, you stood there, you're looking like, you know what I mean? Well, you're getting it tried in, and then, of course, you can move away, and then, of course, you know... Local veteran George Ellis nurs off. But the excitement of a good strike is nothing to the sensation that follows. World champion Selwyn Schofield is disqualified at the midday break for moving his potty sling when he shouldn't have done. Barnsley's Tom Chambers is ruled out too because somebody pulled out his peg. Whatever goes on now, it doesn't matter to me, not really. It's referees, what's at fault? Well, it's been badly organised all the time. They've pulled my peg out about measuring, they should have mm. measured it. You haven't had a chance to measure it? I haven't had a chance to measure it at all. Well, they're out of order, you see, then. So you that shows that it's bad refereeing. Yeah. And don't, when you finish the match, if you want to be measured, leave in your plain material, whatever it is, a, a, a spring or a spell. Referee Sam Ansell, chief swimming baths attendant from Cone, laying down the law as the final batch of competitors prepare their pitches. They know how to bat. And if you hit an error and it breaks, understand this is this is a big rule. Uh, uh, you'll get the another option of, of striking again. And the referee. The referee's decision is final. Understand? The laking goes on. Down here, here. Low down. Roll it up, Dale. Not feel here. Dale! Get right to me! Right on here! Some hit. Some hit. More often, they miss. Did he miss it? <laughs> <laughs> you get away, pal. And a hardy sprinkling of more or less knowledgeable spectators stay on for the final measuring out, done with the customary 20-yard chain. In the end, the winner comes neither from the Greetland home team nor from Barnsley, who'd so manfully kept up the twin traditions of using the genuine spell and arguing about everything. Four one. So congratulations, then, on a very fine win. Well, thank you very much. World champion by a clear margin is Len Kershaw, a quiet contestant from Cone, with a hit of nearly 200 yards. The 200 pounds and the silver cup are his. And again, and again. And after the kind of tempestuous day that would be the death of any other sport. Referee Sam Ansell, who'd had the last word in every rumpus, is on hand again. Now, do you think, with all this argument that went on and the Barnsley complaints and so on... There shouldn't be any argument. Do you think it's going to continue this, or is it doomed? No, it's never doomed. Like, you always get a few arguments. You always get a few. Like, I've been refereeing now years and years, 20 years, and you always get these arguments. Will they be back next year? Yes, of course they'll be here next year. Why not? Like, there's always got to be a world's championship and, uh, and later on we'll be uh, we'll be in the Olympic Games eventually <laughs>